Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and in this series we're creating a detailed game ready axe. In this episode we're setting up a base mesh for the straps and we're going to go straight to sculpt mode and discuss the differences between either going straight to sculpting or box modeling for your base meshes. If you like what you see here then check out the description for my website and playlist section of my channel for other free courses. Or you can follow the links to my character course where you can learn to make a full game ready detailed character from scratch. Okay, so here's where we got to last time and for the straps I'm going to use a slightly different method. Let's zoom in on the strap area. What I'm going to do rather than box modeling, which is what we've used for all the other objects, we started with a base object and then built it up using extrusions and loop cuts and so forth. We're going to go straight to the sculpting with a basic primitive and we're going to get the base shape through sculpting. So I'll shift right click in this area, shift A to add and I'll just add a basic cube. It's really big so I'll scale that down and we can see it's on the edge of our axe there. Now for this, it would be helpful if I had all my axe in the middle here along this line, along the x-axis. Then I know exactly where the symmetry line is and I can have all the object centers along that line making it nice and precise. So for most of these objects, I can click on them, press N on my keyboard and go up to item to get the transform menu just here. And I can actually just type in on the y-axis zero and that will move it right into the center. Same for the handle, the lower straps, the cube of course that we've just added, and the toruses down the bottom. Let's just go to top view and check that they're all in line. So if I click on them, you can see that that object center is right in the middle of the object, which is important when we come to sculpt and we expect symmetry on either side. The same for all these other objects as we go down. We don't have to worry about it being in the middle here because we've got no symmetry going across the x-axis. It's all going across the y. Okay, so now I can click on my cube. Now one thing that's worth noting that my scale is not one. Not the dimensions, the scale. And the scale's all important because that will affect sculpting. When I go across the sculpting, it won't make a lot of difference. It will make a much bigger difference if this isn't uniform. So all these are the same at the moment. So it's still a nice cube. But if these are non-uniform, when you go to sculpting, you'll get a warning message and your sculpting will be a bit strange. It's a good idea then to make sure these are all set to one. So control A, will bring up this menu where you can apply your scale and watch what happens to the scale number. When I click on scale, it all changes to one. My object hasn't changed in size, but the scale is all set to one. So the sculpting will work nicely for me. Now let's go to the sculpting tab and get ready for sculpting. Now this method probably suits artists that don't really enjoy the box modeling approach and they want to get straight in and start sculpting. It can be much more difficult and it can be more time consuming. But for something like these straps, it could be a reasonably complicated thing to model. And actually this may be slightly quicker with this sort of straight to sculpt base mesh method. So now that we're in sculpt mode, we can see the variety of brushes on the left hand side here. I'll just pull those out so you can see all their names and what I'm using. And this is what they look like in 2.91 at the moment. So we've got quite a lot there. I won't be using all these, but I'll be using a few. And recently in 2.9 and onwards, they've turned off symmetry automatically. So it was the case in previous versions of Blender that you had X symmetry on automatically up the top here. You can also find symmetry down the bottom here as well. But we actually want to change that to the Y anyway. So we'll turn off X and put Y on and come into my shape. Now, if I start sculpting now, you can see it's acting a bit strangely. It's not doing much. And that's because I've only got eight vertices to work with. So I'll undo that. What I need to do is a remesh, which will divide my shape up with lots of faces. The remesh menu is up here, and the voxel size is all important. Now we can see the voxel size. If I press Shift R, you can see the voxel size and what it's going to be creating. So if I come down to something like 0 0.03, that's a good size to start off a base mesh. Obviously yours might be quite different depending on the size of your object. So what you should be looking at is the size of the faces rather than the number in this case, because yours might be different. So about there looks good. I'll left click on that and then control R to do the actual remesh. So shift R to see the size and control R to actually apply that remesh. Now when I come in and start sculpting, you can see that details there now. I'll undo that. Now at the moment I'm on the draw brush. I just want to move this into a position where it's similar to the straps here. So I'm going to use the grab brush for this and then we'll start moving our shape about. So F to resize, so pressing F and moving your mouse side to side, and then you can start grabbing this into position, and shift to smooth out, so you'll want to 
pull it around and then smooth out quite regularly. So pull it around like this. And I prefer sort of tapping away. Move around your object very regularly. And then sort of move it into position like this. Strap holes need to come around here and in this and in here and smooth out with shift. So regularly smoothing out and you can see that's sort of following roughly the shape of my strap as you can see in the background there. Now what I might do which will help us a little bit is to bring down the outliner over here and I'm going to change the outliner to the image editor and I'm going to load in my axe reference in here so you can see the strap that I'm trying to make there and I think I'll hide the background image. If you want to do the same, it's probably easiest in layout mode, just click on the background image and press H to hide. Then back on my strap object and back to sculpting. Okay, so I've got a rough layout for the strap, which is mimicking this up here. I'm going to use the clay strips tool. That's quite a good one because it looks like a strap. So I'll resize that to roughly what I'm gonna make the straps look like and just use that. And you can see it kind of mimics a strap there. I probably need my remesh a little bit finer than this. So shift R to get that remesh up. I was about 0.3, so we'll go down to about 0.15, something like that. And then control R to apply that. And let's see what that looks like. That's a lot better, isn't it? So a strap going across here. There's actually two straps in this area. Remember to smooth out if you need to. So that will come down there. Shift to smooth. And there'll be one coming down the side here. To dig in, hold down control and it will dig into your shape. It does the reverse of the brush. So for some brushes, they actually dig in to start off with. So you hold down control to pull out. I can dig in here and there's a strap going down here as well. Okay, so we have a very, very basic base mesh there. We probably just need to tidy up a little bit in here. Don't go too detailed to start off with. Make sure you've got that base shape that you want first. This might go a little bit higher, overlapping this strap that's underneath. And there's a strap down here. Now it's tricky because my shape goes inside the other shape. So if I keep painting and painting and painting, it will slowly appear outside my mesh, as you can see there. And that looks a little bit like two straps going across there. This one overlaps the other one. Now every now and again, it goes a bit blocky like this, and that's the mesh stretching. So I'll come back out. So at that point, we just do a remesh. So pressing Control R to do a remesh, and it remeshes, taking the new shape into account. So when I'm sculpting, it's not adding any topology. Once I've moved my shape around and adapted it, then I do a quick remesh. Remember to use your smooth if you need to. And that's a reasonable base mesh there for the straps going around the ax. So you can see that's probably a little bit quicker than box modeling all those awkward shapes. So for this ax model, we're using a combination of box modeling for the very rigid shapes. And for this strap here, I'm going straight to sculpt mode where it's a bit more complicated. And when you're doing your own game assets or your own objects and you're using this workflow, you have to decide whether you want to box model it to start off with or to go straight to sculpt. You generally box model where you've got very hard edges like the ax head in particular, whereas the straps are much more complicated. They have got hard edges, but they are that bit softer, especially worn straps in this case. And we've got there a bit quicker by going straight to the sculpting method. The handle, you could argue either way. I think it's quicker to box model and then go to sculpt, but you get the idea of these things with experience. Okay, so there we have the base mesh for the straps, and we're all ready to get in and start sculpting our objects. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.